If you don't want me to leave you, you'd better be careful, Adam. My husband, Adam, was sneering at me with an ugly smile. Next to him, my mother-in-law, Olivia, had the same creepy grin. That's right. We'll use you as much as we can, they said. Seeing this, I had to hold back my laughter. They didn't realize the real misunderstanding was on their part. Acting like I didn't know anything, I raised my voice and said, What? I'm not your daughter-in-law anymore. I stopped being one a month ago. A little while later, lively voices echoed from the living room. Today, relatives had gathered to celebrate the completion of our new house. The guests invited by Adam and Olivia must have been shocked by the sudden turn of events. When they rushed into the living room, their faces turned pale. You've done something terrible. How could you do this? They said. But I stayed calm. Don't worry. Everything is already set on my side. Now, the counterattack begins. My name is Jessica Jones, and I'm a nurse at a small clinic in town. I live with my husband, Adam, and my mother-in-law, Olivia. We got married a year ago, when I was 32. At that time, I was working at a big hospital where I first met Adam, who was a patient there. He was in the hospital because of a broken bone. Adam seemed to fall in love with me at first sight and started chasing after me during his stay. Jessica, I've never met anyone as kind and beautiful as you. Please think about having a serious relationship with me, with marriage in mind, he said. Even after he was discharged, Adam kept expressing his feelings for me. Eventually, his confident proposal, along with the fact that he worked at a big company, touched my heart. To be honest, I also really wanted to get married. It felt like the right time to settle down. Even though our relationship was brief, it was possible to move forward quickly as we were adults. However, my dad was a bit critical of my decision. Hasn't it only been four months since you two met? Do you really need to rush into marriage? Are you sure there are no problems, he asked. There's no problem at all, Dad. You always worry too much, I replied. You were raised in a single-parent household, so I understand why you're concerned, he said. I had lost my mother at a young age. When I was young, my father raised me on his own. He was often busy, and now he is on a work assignment out of state. Eventually, he gave his approval for my marriage, and we had a big wedding because the Jones family has many relatives. But soon, I realized that my happiness had peaked at that moment. My dad's worries had been right all along. When we got married, Adam suggested that we live with his mother. Adam's father had passed away a few years ago, and he was worried about leaving his mother alone. Since I was raised by a single parent, I understood how important it was to care for a parent. So, I agreed. I knew living together could cause problems, but before the wedding, my mother-in-law seemed friendly and cheerful. Thinking things would work out, we chose a duplex apartment, hoping it would help us live separately, but close. But my expectations were too hopeful. Right after the wedding, Adam and his mother's personalities changed completely, and I found myself being treated like a servant. After we got married, I decided to change jobs to a clinic that didn't require night shifts, thinking it would be easier if I got pregnant. Knowing I had more time, my mother-in-law insisted I take on all the housework. Talking to Adam about it didn't help. He became focused on work and left everything at home to me. Take care of my mother for me. I'm tired from work. Don't bother me with such small things, he'd say. Small things? I'm really struggling here, I'd reply, but Adam didn't care. The problem is you can't handle it well. Wives are supposed to manage these things smoothly. Why can't you, he would always say. Adam, who used to be so caring before we got married, lost interest completely after. His change was deeply disappointing, and I felt drained. I never imagined I'd be in such a situation, but I couldn't bring myself to tell my dad. I didn't want to trouble him so soon after getting married. I tried to tell myself that Adam and Olivia were just stressed from the new living arrangement, but their behavior only got worse. Adam often went out drinking and rarely came home early. He started going on more business trips, spending even less time at home. But what bothered me most was that Olivia would use a spare key to enter our side of the apartment without asking, even when I wasn't home. She took my personal belongings without permission, not just jewelry and bags, but also clothes that didn't even fit her. One day, I found my expensive clothes stretched out and dumped on the floor. I almost cried, 
but I decided to confront her. Please don't use my things without asking. Using the spare key to come into our place when I'm not here is an invasion of privacy, I said firmly. But Olivia ignored my complaint. What are you talking about? Moving between family members' rooms is natural. There's no such thing as privacy in a family, she said. At that moment, my frustration took over. Please apologize. This is completely unacceptable, I said, trying to stand my ground. Unacceptable? What an exaggeration. I'm a person too, and there are things I won't tolerate. If I have to, I'll call the police, I replied, my voice firm. Olivia's face twisted with anger, and she shouted back, It doesn't matter. We're family after all. Enough already. I was stunned and didn't know what to say. When Adam got home, I told him what had happened, hoping he would understand. But he didn't. As he was about to head to the bathroom, he said coldly, I thought you had some skills as a nurse, but you really are incompetent. Those words hit me hard. I felt like my world was falling apart. This was too much to handle. In that moment, I knew I had to get a divorce. I didn't want to worry my dad, but I began to think about how to bring it up and how to stand up to both Adam and Olivia. A few days later, Adam suddenly brought up the idea of buying a house. He was very excited about building a custom home to his taste, and I pretended to go along with it. Might as well let him build the house he wants, I thought. The harassment from Adam and Olivia continued, and I became more and more disheartened. As the new house was almost finished, it was a month before the move. Next month is the move. Are you done packing? Adam asked. It's almost finished. I've put away the clothes and dishes we don't use anymore, I replied, pointing to the stacked boxes in the corner of the room. Adam smiled widely. Good for you. I'll take you to the new house too. Someone as useless as you can be grateful that you're going, he said. But by then, I had already made up my mind. I'm not going with you. Please, I want a divorce, I said, my voice calm but firm. What? He snapped, clearly not expecting this. I'm done being a servant for you and your mother. I want a divorce, I repeated. The moment I said those words, Adam's face twisted with rage. He raised his hand, and before I knew it, I was on the floor from the force of his slap. Don't get cocky. You're not a house servant or a wife anymore. You're a maid. Pay $300,000 to celebrate the new house made, he yelled. I held my cheek where he had slapped me, looking up at him in shock. I couldn't believe how cruel and inhuman he had become. Adam raised his hand again, but this time, he also lifted his foot, ready to strike me further. His words were like knives, cutting me deeply as he mercilessly insulted me. I just put up with everything on the surface, but inside, I was planning my revenge. I wasn't satisfied with just getting a divorce anymore. Adam didn't notice me smirking as I crouched down. A month later, we moved into the new house. It was a custom-designed house that Adam had carefully planned. The house had a big bedroom with a single bed, a fitness room, a study, and a bedroom and hobby room for Olivia. But, of course, there was no room for me. Even a single stool in the kitchen was considered a luxury, as Adam had said. Adam was very proud of his work. Adam's attention to detail shines through. How wonderful this house is. Your mother must be so happy to live here, he said, satisfied. This makes me a proper adult now. I'm glad I could do this for my mother. I watched their shallow display of affection, but I kept a cold, distant look. I whispered softly, well, what a wonderful thing. I'm sure the relatives will be surprised by this. It was a small trap I had set. As I expected, Olivia immediately took the bait. That's a great idea. Why don't we invite all the relatives to see this beautiful house? Let's have a party to celebrate the new house, she said eagerly. Yes, let's do that. Maybe I'll boast to my uncle and cousins too, Adam added. Excited, the two of them contacted their relatives and began planning a big housewarming party. Olivia, who loved to show off, busily prepared for the event, using me to do most of the work. The first big event in the new duplex finally took place. About 15 people, mostly relatives from the Jones family, gathered. With so many people, the house was filled with lively chatter. Olivia dressed up stylishly to welcome the guests at the entrance, while Adam proudly showed off the house. As expected, 
The pair who loved to show off made sure everything was perfect. The interior was decorated with elegant touches, soft lighting, and houseplants, creating a pleasant atmosphere. The table, decorated with flowers and fruits, was set with fine Chinese ceramics. Classical music played in the background from Adam's home theater, where a screen displayed beautiful foreign landscapes. It was like a hobbyist's dream. Meanwhile, I was busy cooking in the kitchen. Adam's clueless relatives saw me working hard and commented, Jessica, you're doing so well. Adam is lucky to have a wife as beautiful and hardworking as you. That's not true, I replied, forcing a smile. Just then, Adam came over to me. Come over here, he said, without explaining why. Ah, uh, okay, I answered, feeling uneasy. Even though I was still in the middle of cooking, he grabbed my arm and led me to another room. Soon Olivia followed, giving me a stern, cold look. I saw you looking happy when my uncle praised you, Adam said. That's not true, I replied. Don't lie. You are smiling, he said, looking down at me with a cold sneer. If you don't want me to abandon you, be careful. Olivia, standing next to him, was laughing too. But I didn't let it bother me because I had a plan. I quietly glanced at the wall clock. It was almost time for my plan to begin. With a playful expression and tone, I said, What? I'm not a daughter-in-law anymore. That ended a month ago. What? They both stared at me, shocked. I stood up confidently. Do you remember what Adam said a month ago? That I'm no longer a wife, but just a maid? Olivia, you've been treating me like a maid too. So, you don't see me as a daughter-in-law either, right? What are you trying to say? Olivia snapped. As I started speaking, the atmosphere shifted. Adam seemed thrown off and couldn't hide his confusion, while Olivia was still snorting beside him. Yes, exactly, she said. Since you're useless as a daughter-in-law, we treat you like a maid. While she said this, I could hear murmurs coming from the living room. My plan was starting to unfold. I secretly smiled. That's right, I said. I'm not a daughter-in-law anymore, and I'm not a maid either. I'm leaving this house. As soon as I said those words, the murmurs from the living room grew louder. Adam and Olivia noticed the noise and began to panic. What's that sound? Is that my voice? Adam asked. The two of them rushed into the living room, where the relatives were glued to the screen, watching a video. It was painful for me to watch, but it was necessary. The screen showed a moment where Adam was verbally abusing me and raising his hand to strike me. What is this? Adam shouted his face turning pale. The relatives were all staring at him with stern, cold looks. Overwhelmed by their gazes, Adam trembled. I had secretly recorded that incident from a month ago, when he declared I was just a maid. I had been gathering evidence of my husband's abuse and my mother-in-law's bullying for a while. Of course, I needed it for the divorce, but my anger didn't stop there. I held on to these recordings as part of my plan for revenge, specifically for this day. During the housewarming party, I had set the video to play automatically. I knew it might inconvenience the relatives, but it was a necessary step. Adam, what does this mean? How awful. I couldn't endure such a thing, one of the relatives said. This is, Adam stammered, his face pale, as he faced the cold stares of the relatives. He was unusually shaken. Seizing the moment, I slammed the papers I had been hiding onto the table. There's no escape now. Please sign here. We are getting a divorce, I said, presenting the divorce papers I have prepared for today. I'm done being just a maid. I want a divorce, I said firmly. Divorce? This is no joke, just a typical marital issue, Adam replied. Typical? Is it normal to abuse and hit your wife? That's not a marriage. I'm sick of you, I said. As I spoke, I could see the relatives nodding in agreement. After watching the video, it was clear to everyone who was in the wrong. While Adam hesitated to sign the divorce papers, I decided to present my final move. Also, it's clear you've been having an affair. I have solid proof of it, I said, watching his face pale. What? He stammered. I've always suspected something was off, especially with your earnings not increasing. So, I hired a detective agency to gather proof. It turns out your affair is with the daughter of a client CEO. This will definitely affect your career, I continued. 
I spread out the photos and documents on the table for everyone to see. The images showed Adam and the woman entering a hotel together. Don't look. Please don't look. Adam shouted, frantically trying to cover up the evidence as he lunged forward. I could barely hold back my laughter at how desperate he looked. I will be seeking a fair share of assets from both you and your partner. Since she's also married, there might be claims from her side too, I added. It's not that's not right, Adam stammered, but he couldn't explain what he thought was wrong. As usual, Olivia jumped in to defend him. What are you talking about? An affair is nothing. It could even be seen as a mark of a real man, Olivia said. I've told you many times that you're not fit to be a wife because you can't forgive even this much. She still didn't realize how her comments were making the relatives uncomfortable. I looked at her coldly, deciding it was time for my next move. Olivia, do you remember the terrible things you've done to me? I asked, taking out my smartphone. I had set it up to control the videos. I selected a specific clip and projected it onto the large screen. The video showed everything how she made me do all the housework, including laundry and cooking, how she entered my room without permission, and how she used my things. There was even footage of her trying to wear my clothes, stretching them out until they were ruined. As the screen displayed Olivia's rude behavior, including scenes of her throwing laundry and criticizing my cooking, gasps of surprise echoed from the female relatives. When the video showed Olivia sneaking into my bedroom, the room was filled with shocked whispers. Everything was perfectly captured by the surveillance cameras I had set up. What is this? Filming our house without permission? This is a violation of privacy. Olivia screamed angrily, but it was too late. It was ironic for her to claim a violation of privacy now, after she had denied my right to it before. Filming inside a home might be seen as a privacy violation, but in this case, it was necessary to show the truth, I said calmly. I no longer cared about any accusations. After all, it was Olivia who barged into my room uninvited and acted as she pleased. It was clear who was in the wrong. The screen clearly showed Olivia going through my clothes and accessories like a thief. Stop it. Don't look, she shouted, her face finally turning pale. Behind her, the female relatives whispered, Even Olivia? That's just awful and unbelievable. If someone did that to me, I'd call the police right away. Their criticisms grew louder, and Olivia became more flustered. I pointed at her and spoke loudly. What I can't forgive the most is that you broke a keepsake from my late mother. It was precious to me, and you tried to laugh it off. You haven't even paid a cent for the repairs. Do you understand how much pain you and your son have caused me over this past year, showing no human empathy? At that moment, the relatives finally took my side. They stood behind me, glaring at Olivia and Adam with stern faces. Olivia, Adam, apologized to Jessica, one of them said firmly. That's right. Don't you feel any shame for what you've done? Added another. Though Adam and Olivia were still hesitant, the pressure from the relatives finally made them apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, they said, but their words were hollow and insincere. Still, I decided to accept the apology in front of everyone. With a gentle push from his uncle, Adam reluctantly filled out the divorce papers. After he signed, I felt a wave of relief and thanked the uncle. Don't worry. If there's anything I can help with in the future, please don't hesitate to ask, he said. You've been through a lot, and if you need anything moving forward, I'll be here to support you. Just get in touch. Thank you, I said. To be honest, I had been worried because they were Adam's relatives, but in the end, they saw that his and Olivia's actions were not normal. Before I left the house, some of them even gave me their contact information, offering support if I ever needed it. After the relatives left, only a defeated-looking Adam and Olivia remained. I felt so much lighter. In the quiet that followed, Adam was the first to speak. As expected, you've done something outrageous. How could you do this? He said, his voice shaking with anger. Olivia, too, turned her surprise into anger, but their words no longer affected me. This is what people mean when they say you reap what you sow, I said calmly. I'm going to submit the divorce papers now. I'll also take my belongings soon. I won't allow that. Give me the divorce papers. Adam shouted, trying to grab the signed papers from me. But at that moment, 
Someone stepped out from behind me, stopping him. If you lay a hand on my daughter again, said the person, firmly standing in front of Adam. I'll do the same to you, my father said as he quickly twisted Adam's arm behind his back. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Dad. Adam cried out. Right on time, my father appeared, and I moved to his side for safety. My dad, my only supporter, had been informed of my plan in advance. He had rushed over from his remote work location after hearing how I was going to stand up for myself today. No, no, it was just a small joke, Adam pleaded, trying to downplay everything. There's no need to pretend anymore. I know everything the affair and what you've done to my daughter, my dad said firmly. When I found out, I was furious. Ouch. It hurts. Adam cried out again as my dad's grip tightened. My father was much bigger than Adam. When he was younger, he kept fit with boxing and U.S. football, and he still kept up with running and weight training. Adam, on the other hand, enjoyed watching movies and dining out, and he had gained some weight over time. He was no match for my dad. Being a single father who had raised me with care, my dad was even more determined to get justice than I was. He looked at Adam with a cold, serious expression. About your fair partner, my dad continued, she's actually the daughter of the president of my company. What? Adam stammered. Then you work at TCH Company? That's right. I'm the executive vice president of TCH Company, my dad replied. Adam's face turned pale within seconds. I've already reported this matter to the president, my father continued. According to the young lady, you hid the fact that you were married when you approached her. While she is also at fault for continuing the relationship after she found out, the president was very upset with your behavior. At that moment, Adam looked more defeated than at any other point that day. I was surprised too, as it was the first time I learned my dad's company was connected to Adam's workplace. As I was still processing this, my father turned back to Adam, his smile gone, replaced by a stern look. For a company, ours is a major client. Honestly, we have plenty of other suppliers to choose from, even without your products. So when we end our dealings, I will make sure to inform your president that, due to issues on both sides, continuing business would be difficult. All transactions will be halted. Hearing this, Adam screamed and slumped down in despair. With that, he knew he would not only lose his chances of advancing in his career, but also his position at the company. He had caused a huge problem, and now it was catching up to him. He was left completely drained, standing there in shock. Beside him, Olivia yelled at my father as he moved my luggage out of the house, calling him a demon and a devil. Hearing her words, I couldn't help but wonder if she was really talking about herself. But the joy of finally leaving that house was too great for me to care. I felt excited as I moved my things, ready to start fresh and free. I loaded all my belongings into the truck my father was driving, and we set off. As the door closed and the truck started moving, I saw Adam and Olivia chasing after us in the rearview mirror. Thief. Leave the maid and your belongings behind. Do you really think losing the contract with TCH Company will affect us? They shouted. I was shocked. I couldn't believe how shameless they were, even at the end. Surrounded by people like that, it's amazing you managed to live there at all, my dad said. I think so too, I replied. Their disgraceful behavior was painful to watch until the very end, and I was sure the neighbors saw it all. I noticed people peeking out of their windows, probably listening to their loud voices. I felt sorry for anyone who had to keep living near them. Once we turned the corner, and they were out of sight, I turned to my dad. Thank you so much for everything today, dad. Not at all. I'd do anything for my precious daughter, he said with a smile. He was my hero, just like when I was a child. Later, the divorce papers were successfully processed. With all the evidence I had, it was clear that Adam was at fault. We also managed to settle the division of assets. The house went to Adam, but he was struggling to keep up with the mortgage. Originally, he had relied on my income as a nurse and chose only the most expensive materials for the house. That luxurious house, which looked so impressive, didn't match our real life. Both the title and the mortgage were in his name, so he was left dealing with the heavy monthly payments. His savings were quickly running out. 
I was truly relieved that we didn't take out a joint mortgage. Of course, Adam had to pay me my share of the property. But it wasn't just me, he was also being claimed by the spouse of his affair partner. The president of his company was making sure all payments were done on time to regain trust, so there were no delays. Adam's boss was keeping a close eye on the situation to make sure I was paid, too. At work, Adam was uncomfortable and stressed. He had been sidelined within the company, and it was clear he was in a difficult situation. How did it come to this? He must have wondered. But for someone who always liked to show off, it would be hard to endure his new reality for long. On top of that, the president's daughter, who was Adam's affair partner, also ended up getting a divorce. She was fired from the family company, TCH, where she had been working. I was also firm in demanding an apology from her. As the pampered daughter of a company president, she probably never realized her mistakes before. Now, she faces the harsh reality of life, and Adam faces the severe backlash of a world he once took lightly. Both of them are haunted every day by the huge amounts they have to pay. Meanwhile, Olivia has started down a path of self-destruction. Knowing her son was struggling financially, she took up a part-time job. But she made things worse by stealing from the supermarket where she worked. When the store's inventory didn't match, the manager checked the security cameras and caught Olivia secretly taking items. When questioned, she didn't show any regret. She even argued, there's so much here, a little bit won't hurt. It's because you're so stingy that the store isn't doing well. It also came out that she had been reselling some of the stolen goods online. Her actions led to her arrest, and she became known in the community for all the wrong reasons. Even after being released, she continued to live in that house, but it was nothing like the fine home it used to be. The house, once built to impress, soon became run down due to a lack of care. Years later, I heard that people in the community called it the garbage house. For years after my divorce, I began to think about marriage again. Encouraged by a friend, I decided to remarry. I met a kind-hearted, gentle man who understood me and gave me the support I needed. When I introduced him to my father, he quickly gave his approval, and I felt relieved to start my new married life. Later, we were blessed with energetic twin boys, and our home became lively and full of joy. Raising twins was challenging, but the support of our parents was a huge help. My in-laws were warm, thoughtful people who always respected my opinions on parenting. After all the hardships I had gone through, I felt deeply grateful to have met such wonderful people. My father adored his grandchildren, and the way he smiled when playing with them was something I had never seen before. Peekaboo. Look, it's Grandpa. Oh, Dad, your face is so unguarded, I'd tease. Really? Do you think so? He'd say, trying to hide his smile. But it never lasted long, and he quickly returned to his gentle, doting expression, fully embracing his role as a loving grandfather. Seeing him so happy made my heart overflow with joy. Beside me, my husband smiled warmly and leaned in close. Thank you for giving me such wonderful children. Let's keep building our happiness together. Yes, thank you so much, I replied. Moving forward, I'm committed to creating a loving, warm family. Together with my beloved family, I look forward to building a new life filled with joy and happiness.